starting to record again. This time we're going to do buttons. So button tutorial. If you don't want to bother with it, you can look at the button solution and it's a completed project. So I have downloaded these already and uh, these tutorials are on the bhacker.com website in the Android directory. I'm going to keep this window open. I'm going to minimize my virtual box. <coughs> I'm going to go into the Android tutorials and click on buttons. Buttons is right here. Buttons is only seven pages long, not too bad. But let me warn you a little bit. Most of the instructions and stuff is taken away. It's abridged. It's because we're going to assume we can follow some of these steps. So, did we have a question or no? Okay, good. Brief tutorial. It's going to show you how to code a very basic two button application, a start button and a stop button. And the buttons are just going to be responded to by certain events. And it's going to also introduce the concept of toast messages, which comes up quite often actually. So two button application use case here. We have the two simple buttons that we're going to put there, a start button and an end button. And it's going to be useful to show you how to actually look at the button clicks, how to program button clicks, because what do we do? We're programming activities. Most of uh, everything we're doing in an activity, we're going to program events for it. So it's very simple. We're going to create a two button app. <coughs> so create the project. Same project as we've been using before. It's going to be an Android application project. And what are we going to do? We're going to have a main activity in here. The main activity is going to be defined by a basic layout consisting of one text view and two buttons. So let's go ahead and create it. So I'm going to call this one two buttons. So I'm going to go file, new, other. And I got Android application project. And I'm going to click on next. And this one's going to be called two buttons. Unless I have it in the project already. I'll call this two buttons again, just in case I have it in the project already. <laughs> you can't use the same project name twice. So two buttons again. And uh, I'll change it to edu.itu. Two buttons again. Looks pretty good. Next, next, next. Use a new blank activity. Next. Yeah, people go crazy with naming conventions. I'm just going to leave this at main activity because then at least I know what my main activity was. Just in case I start adding on name getter and stuff. So I usually just to leave the defaults here. So I'm just going to leave them and click on finished. Well, now I have button app up here and I got two buttons down here. If I open up two buttons, give it a few minutes, it needs to, to write itself. I get this lovely little screen. Well, I already have this little text thing here. So I got some choices. I'm going to cheat sheet this. <laughs> I'm going to flip it over to the XML side of things. And I'm just going to cut and paste it. And then you can drag and drop all you want. Uh, I'm going to do this here. I'm just going to take everything out of here, paste it in here. Oops, well, my layout got messed up. My nice, beautiful layout's all messed up. Well, I can always put the lines in here to fix it. All my lovely indentation's gone, though. It's okay. My text view. Maybe it's better to recreate it. Who knows? <laughs> Got my two buttons in here. And my buttons here are going to be a start button and a stop button. So I'm just going to clean up my layout a little bit so you can see what I'm looking at. It's okay. If you don't want to do this this way, I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to do it the, another way. So if I click on the graphical user layout now, you see I have set to uh, set the required layout to uh, let me get to set layout. Uh -oh. 
Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. I probably should have just pasted two buttons in there. <laughs> All right. You know what, though? I have a word wrap going on. That's what the problem is. Let's see. Unexpected namespace prefix Android found in tag text view. All right. Edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, set, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo. Or I can just start fresh. I probably should have saved a copy of it. So I'm pressing Command Z and I'm getting back to my original. <laughs> Famous last words, don't do as I say, don't do as I do. <laughs> or, you know, better yet, I probably could have just done this and said, no, don't save anything. <laughs> I'm going back to my original. <coughs> what do we got going on here now? My original seems, still seems to have a problem. Okay, enough of that. So much for shortcuts. All right, let's see what the problem is here. Unexpected namespace prefix Android found in tag. It says there's a special character in here. Okay, bad, bad, don't cut and paste. So I'm going to delete, we'll just build it from scratch. I was trying to take out, uh, I was trying to, I'll just delete the contents. I was trying to save some steps. So let me just create a new project, start over again. So I'm going a uh, new other Android application because I messed up my project. I'm going to call this one two buttons. <laughs> And, uh, I know, don't cut and paste. edu.itu. <laughs> because I don't like working with the interface, so I thought maybe I'd just cut and paste it. All right. Next. Next. It might work for you, actually. Blank activity. Main activity. Now I have a working application again. I'm in the main activity. So that, that one worked. Okay, so now I have a relative layout. So I'm going to put two buttons on there. Let me just make sure here. I'm going to have a start button, I'm going to have a stop button, and I'm going to have a text view. So go ahead and drag two buttons on there. We know how to do that. There's no need to cut and paste. So I'm going to move my text field up here, actually. And uh, let's see, here's a button. One button. Here's another button. Two buttons. Because, okay, uh, another thing to keep in mind. This is a relative layout. We haven't looked at the layouts yet but it's not a linear layout. So the first one we looked at was a linear layout. In fact, this code here is, uh, I believe, a linear. Linear. Linear layouts, and I'm going to go through layouts probably next, actually. <laughs> we have uh, the uh, line that's left justified and all the components on the GUI is formatted that way. Relative says put something to the left of this or to the right of that or to the center of something. Relative is a little bit easier to work with. The defaults used to be late, linear. They've changed it recently to relative. But the application is basically going to have two buttons on it. The two buttons we really need to keep track of are the IDs for the button start and the button stop. The rest of it, we're going to put a label on it for uh, start and stop. So here I can say button number one. It's button number one. This one's going to be start. So I'm going to say button start as the ID. And then for the text of the button, I'm going to put start on here. And then for the second button, this is going to be button stop. Because button one, button two don't doesn't really mean anything to me. So then I'm going to put on the button stop. 
So basically demonstrating the concept of there being more than one button. So we're going to write a uh, listener that's going to pick up multiple activities. Same concept can be done for a label, for a text box, for anything. We're just going to use a couple buttons. We could load some other stuff on here if we wanted to. So I've got button start, button stop. Everything else looks pretty good, so I'm going to save the layout. At this point I could run it and it should work, and I should have two buttons on there, so... No, no harm, no foul. Uh, actually, I'm just going to run it because I think I have my emulator up already. And it's connected, so... I'm going to run my fancy application right now. Hello. Yep, there it is. We're waiting for the screen to come up. That sounds good. Run it. Well, okay, so the placement wasn't quite the most ideal. <laughs> but I have a start button. Hello. I have a start button and I have a stop button, but nothing's doing anything. Because I put them in relative, I uh, need to move it around, actually. So I'm going to leave my interface as is because I'm not trying to build a beautiful application, but I think I will move the buttons down. So I'm going to go back to my layout and fix it. So I'm in the resource directory, layout. How did it end up like that? I didn't think I did that. So I don't know. I'm sorry? Yes, you can. Yeah. Oh, that's a good thing too. Yeah, fill parent. Let's do that actually. Uh, instead of match parent, let's make this the fill parent. It'll it'll mess up our orientation. No, it won't. Actually, it's pretty good. Okay. So I'm happier with that one. I guess it was yes. Oh, I guess it was just set that way. All right. So now we're gonna change the source code that uh, is driving this fabulous application. So run the application, it should look like this. Well, not really, but mm -hmm. something similar to that. <laughs> well, I didn't put the text, I didn't put the text box, on. I just left hello world up there. So You can probably figure out how to add text to a text label. Hopefully we did the same thing as the, what we did for the enter and username. So now we're going to add the on-click listener to the button. Same thing as we did before, but now we need to identify two buttons instead of one. So change the main activity code. We still have the main activity that extends activity. And so the activity itself is going to include a private message string called the long tag. I think it was two button app for use of the long tag. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes here. Log, excuse me, log tag for a logging technique. Because this, this, this tutorial is twofold. I'm going to show you logging, and I'm also going to show you um, the application running. And when we run the application, we have a little window that shows up that I keep closing. We also have this button over here. So let me zoom in here a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It says DDMS up here in the left-hand corner. And most people, they click on that. And then they go, how do I get back? <laughs> then you click on the Java. The DDMS is, is the output that's coming from the emulator. And you're going to see it's going to work with VirtualBox because it's still writing to the same log. So we're going to have a tag that we're going to stick in here. And we're going to put a filter on the tag so we can watch the messages as they come through and see what's going on. It's just a two-button app, but you know we might want to see it. So I'm going to flip back to the Java. We'll get there eventually. But that's kind of like one of the one of the things we're gonna do, which is why we're creating this private static string log tag. <coughs> so go ahead and put this line of code at the top of main activity. So main activity extends activity. I'm gonna stick it at the top. So we got main activity, which extends activity, because I don't wanna. I'm gonna cut and paste. This I can cut and paste. I don't have to type this one. So I created a new string, and the string is called log tag. And the log tag is going to be equal to two button app. 
and then um, we'll figure out how to do a filter. Why I'm going to do that because we want to see where we are in the program, and so we can log information. So we have a tag. It's kind of like a key, and then for each key, we're going to have a message that's going to show up for the key. So on the onCreate method, this is where we're going to create our two instances of our two buttons, and then we're going to put the listener on the two buttons. And then we're going to have the onClick listener start with a new onClick listener. And the new onClick listener is going to look at it and say onClick start button started, or the stop, stop button was clicked. Why do we want to do that? Because we were trying to troubleshoot this application to log information as part of our debugging because we want to see the user clicked on start, and this is supposed to happen. The user clicked on stop, then that's supposed to happen. Now I'm really going to take a chance here. I'm going to cut and paste this code. <laughs> Hopefully I won't have the same XML problem I had. Because <clears throat> I'm too lazy, I'm going to cut and paste this entire method body, stick it in there, and go through the code. Mm, let's see what happens. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just see what I've cut and pasted here. Well, let me take the whole thing if I'm going to do it this way. Which means I'm going to get rid of that, that variable I just declared and replace it with this cut and paste job. Formatting is probably going to get messed up, I suspect, but let's see. Maybe I'll... Oh. Okay, yeah, formatting did get messed up, but I can easily fix that. I've got some markers here, but it's because I don't have these things imported yet. In my imports, all I have is a bundle, activity, and menu. So some of these fans going off. Unless that's my computer. No, I hope not. All right, so <laughs> some of these computers make a noise. Um, all right, so here we have our onCreate method. We're going to run a super onCreate. And naturally, button here is not recognized. So I'm going to put my mouse over this and I'm going to say import button. So now I have my button recognized. Maybe that is my computer. No? I think it's somebody else's. Whose computer is that? Your computer? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Whew, it's not mine. All right. <laughs> so, it's terrible. Um, Start listener here is going to be create a class start listener. Well, we don't have that we don't have that class in here because uh, it's down here, and we haven't implemented it yet. Uh, so I'm going to leave that error message alone, and I'm going to fix the obvious ones at this point. And some of the other error messages are going to are going to go away. So this is the on click listener, and then the on click listener is going to do what's called a toast, and I'm going to show you the toast in a second. So what you want to do is kind of go through here as I'm going through here, if you're doing it this way, or you can type the code in yourself if you want to do it that way. What we're doing is we're taking the code from the PDF file and we're inserting it in here. So our onCreate method is calling super onCreate and then setting the context view to main activity. We've done that before. Then we have the two buttons. We have the buttons, button start. That's going to be looking at button start from our r.id from that XML file where we put the ID as button start and we have one for button stop and it's going to use the find the view by ID same thing we did in the first tutorial it's going to run the on click listener with the start listener but start listener hasn't been created yet which is why there's an error here start listener is further down the road here but we have to I have to fix it so go ahead and just leave these two if you've gotten that far Creating an anonymous implementer for the onClick listener. Well, then that's where we got this onClick listener start listener. So onClick listener needs to be imported, so I'm going to go ahead and import that in. When I've done that, then I'm going to say add an unimplemented method. Well, it's already down here. Here it is here. It's just having issues right now because it's not implemented correctly either. So one of the items I do need to import in is toast as well, so I'm going to import toast in. We had a question? Import. Yeah. 
Implement. Oh, we don't have to. We're doing it in a different way. I'm going to show you. As soon as I fix all these errors, I'm going to show you what's going on. <laughs> Instead of taking the entire class and interfacing it with the on-click listener, which is what we did in the other example, we're going to do it inside of the implementation. So we're creating an anonymous implementation of on-click listener, and then we're going to add the on-click listener to the buttons. So the buttons are working independently on their own on listeners with a kind of a generic anonymous kind of listener that's not tied to the class actually because we're not we're not implementing or interfacing anything um, so the on click listener is this method here but it says add unimplemented methods we don't want to do that we have to we have this down here and it is implemented we just have errors in the implementation so when I rewrite this I'm going to change the order it's not implemented because view needs to be imported. Basically, we're lacking a bunch of imports is what the problem is. Yes? Format feature? I don't know. I just don't use it. Yeah? Yeah. Then I won't be able to go line by line, but thank you. <laughs> I never use that feature, actually. Um, anyway, so if you miss that, if you right mouse click, go source, you can do the auto format on. Where's the source? Right mouse click, go source, and then. Control shift what? Yes. Control shift F, or right mouse click, go to source, and then format. Uh, Format, 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 yeah, control shift F. Huh, good deal. Do they have one to do the automatic includes? <laughs> you know, the other day I found out there's one that does setters and getters, huh? Yeah, huh? Do we have one that will automatically update our, in our includes? Eclipse is getting so much, so much better. Right, anyway, so. I'm going to add the, I still got log, I have to add the log to the, log is unimported, so I'm going to import it. Control shift what? Control, control and O. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's actually, did I actually, this is a, this is a, a comment. Get rid of that. Oh, maybe that wasn't a comment. Edit, undo, edit, undo, and undo typing. Mm. Uh, let's see what I didn't do on the bottom here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Oh, there we go. Well, that's really weird. Okay. It won't take this piece over here. <laughs> All right, you know what? I have to type. I'm trying to trying to be lazy, but it's not working for me. All right, let me just take this out and type it in. Here, we'll just do it this way. Uh, my own create options menu. Actually, I don't even need on create options <coughs> menu. You know what? Let's just take it out. I'm not using the on create options menu. <laughs> That's the lazy part right there. All right, so I have workable code now. If you don't want to do any of this, open up the solution project, copy and paste it from the solution project. That's probably the better way of doing it if you're going to try and copy and paste it. So, <coughs> All right, so we have a, a log tag that we've created that's going to tag our messages that are going to come out of this application. And uh, on the onCreate, we're going to set the context view to the activity main that we've created, our main activity. We've got our two buttons here. We got that the um, auto source code formatter moved our comments over too. <laughs> so, all right, I don't really know if I like that, but we'll see. It should be moved over this way. 
So we've added our two set on click listener. And this is the on click listener that we're doing. That's going to be called start start listener. Start listener is going to be used um, for the start button. Stop listener is going to be used for the stop button. So there are basically two anonymous implementations of on click listener. One way of doing it. I have another tutorial that has a totally different way of doing it as well. Just one way of setting the listeners for the buttons. When we set the listeners for the buttons, we're going to go log.d, add the tag, on click called start button. And then toast is a utility that sends up a message. It's like a little itsy bitsy piece of it. Why are they called it toast? Do you know why they call it toast? I don't know. <laughs> like a toaster? You put a piece of toast in and it just pops up. It's a toast message. It pops up. It's a pop-up message. I guess like a piece of bread in a toaster. I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's called toast. And uh, if you put it over, if you put the mouse over, and you can see this little yellow thing that comes up, it doesn't give you. Ma it makes a standard toast that just contains a text view. Great. Okay. We'll see it working, and you'll see what that means. We can set the length of the toast. We can set which activity it's going to be done in, and it's going to be done in main activity dot this, and it's going to be start button was clicked, and then uh, on click listener ended at the end of the yeah uh, after the listener ended. So what we're going to do is um, log the start of the listener, the end of the listening, and then any activity that occurs during it is going to be done through the toast essentially. So we're going to set up a toast message. And then we're going to create another one, the same method again, over again, but this is for the stop button. Sometimes I see this when the method behavior is completely different for each one of the buttons. We just want to put an on-click listener on there, and then we want to run an intent. So as an example, one of the buttons could run up a get name, name getter intent, just like our other button on the name getter went from one um, activity to another activity. The buttons can bring up different activities, can be used for a menuing system, can uh, you know drive some event-driven behavior for the application. Now down here I have the on start and on resume and on pause. So these are the activities of the life cycle of the application. We haven't hit the life cycle one yet, but I can hit it at the same time as this one. The life cycle tutorial is just showing us the different stages of the um, app. So when we start the app, we have an on start event. And we're going to log that the on start was called. And we're going to log it to our same log that we're going to log the rest of the messages in. So we can see when the application started. On a resume, we're going to call the on resume. On pause, the on pause. These are just log messages that are going to occur in the log for each one of the states that the application is going to go through. Because you can't see anything happening. In our hello world, we can't tell that the application started or paused or switched or did anything. On stop and then on destroy. So we have an on. So we basically just have log messages running. <coughs> so I'm going to run the app. Actually, that's it. It's just the the two buttons added to the UI plus the code, and the code is basically running a bunch of log messages and toast. So if I run the app right now, run as an Android application. Oops, that's my old one. Okay. Find the application. Here's all oh, my buttons look a little bit better. So I'm going to load back up Eclipse here. And I have my app running in the background right here. And I'm going to click over to the DDMS button over here on the top of the screen. I have some lecture information on it that I'll show you uh, later. If I come over here and I can see, actually, I already have a test button app, but I don't have one for this one, and this one is called uh, Two Buttons, I believe. So in my code, let me take a look real quick, see what I called it. I'm going to flip back to the Java real quick. What did I call my uh, tag? I called it Two Button App. Oh, so it's the same. So you need to create. I should have called it something else. So. In here, you click on the little plus button over here. So what I'm going to do is add a tag filter. So everything that has two button app 
which is what I stuck over here. Let me just show you what we're doing here one more time. <coughs> I created a string, a log tag, and called it two button app. Took the log tag and called it with the log tag here. So log.d tag, which is going to be two button app, is going to log on click called start menu on click end start menu. All the different behaviors are going to be logged. And the log is going to show up down here. Well, the log, this is, uh, let me clear the log actually, because this is from the last time I called it. Because I haven't clicked anything yet, actually. How did I get this here? Well, I clicked on the plus button, and you give it a filter name. So I'm going to say another, another filter. <laughs> and you give it by log, log tag, what, what tag did I give it? I called it two button app. And you press OK. Now when you click on the filters, it brings me up only the messages for the tag that I've included in the log. So up here on the top, this is everybody, all messages. You can see there's a lot of messages that occurred. It keeps it to a certain point and then it clears it out. Um, so at this point, let's see, I can clear it out. Actually, I was wondering because I used to be a clear button up here. <laughs> so this is the new clear button. I've cleared it out, so now if I click on another uh, another app, I've got nothing in here, and I've got nothing in here, so I've got no messages right now. So I'm going to click on something. I'm going to click on the Start button. Oops. I'm going to click on Start, and I had the Start button was clicked. That's my toast message that came up in my log. I got on resume was called actually because I came back to the app. The app was sleeping. <laughs> I clicked on the app to resume it. And uh, <clears throat> the start button was click, and the on click ended on the start button. So if I come back over here again and click the stop button, well, I'm going to get a resume again. Well, not a resume this time. So stop button was clicked. So now over here in the log, I see that the two button app, the stop button was clicked. Another thing, I can put any message I want out there. So what I can do is tag the log events, and each one of my events that's occurring on the UI can have a log entry. Log entry is going to be showing up here. So as you're using it, you can tell what activity is occurring. Makes a little bit of sense in terms of the UI. Makes a lot of sense when you're trying to troubleshoot problems. It's the equivalent to how people used to put like a printf statement or C out to the screen. Made it out of the function. <laughs> Uh, this and this is equal to this. I sent this number to that function, you know. Uh, so something about the calculations you're performing, um, something about the logic of the program, anything you want can be put in the log, just like a printf. So we don't have a we don't have a console to look at out here. We have a console to look at in here. When you deport the application. Actually, when you deploy the application, you just put it out into the market. You want to get rid of the logs. It's one of the things you want to do. Because otherwise, this is like the debugging information. And then you have extra stuff in there you don't need. So and the logs kind of take up. They're not needed. It's kind of unnecessary in a deployed application. It's nice for testing, though. So as you could possibly imagine, the logs come in handy, and so do button events that differentiate between two different types of buttons. We can have the button event, and this is something that you can start playing with, actually. You can have the button event take something and change the label. So how do we change the label? We know how to change the label, actually, from the first app. We can take the label, get the text from another label. We can just, I mean, actually, we could put an input box on here and do the same thing again. And what we're doing is instead of sending it to an intent, we're using it from within the same app. Take what's in the box, copy it to a label by getting the resource. So out here, all we essentially do is create variables that are using the items that are on the UI screen. So instead of this button coming from find view event for the button, I can put in here as an example, what do we have in here? The label. So what's that label called? I'm going to refresh my memory. It's probably label text view one. <laughs> so I can come in here and the source is an example. And uh, here I'll just stick it at the top. Text view, my text. It's going to be equal to, what's well, a text view? 
And in the, this one's going to be a find view by ID, if I spell it correctly, r.id dot text field uh, text field one put a semicolon at the end import text field because that's what it's cut oh text view excuse me if I spell it correctly import text view now I have the text view now I can take and set text inside of the button here and so instead of running a toast is this what this is case I can go well my text dot set text get text run methods on there to set the text that's in the text field or dot label it's going to be equal something and then we go well I can't remember what that's about then you go over to hello again or you go over to another project and you go well how did I do that well, up there in get name we sent it over but out there in the main activity we said text view t is equal to new text view this we created a new text field and we got the, t the value here from t. Same kind of way, we can do t.setText is equal to something. So t.setText is going to be equal to, and then I can flip back over to here and go, okay, this is my text. Dot. And when I put the dot in here, I should get this little screen that pops up that does autofill for me. So if I start writing stuff in here like set text, <laughs> there we go. What am I going to set it to? Some text like hello there from the start button. Now when I run the app, well if I run it right now it's already loaded so I have to kind of run it again to see what's going to happen. And this is um, outside so I'm going to have to stick this somewhere else like maybe inside of the buttons. So this isn't going to do anything out here actually. So inside of one of these buttons, like uh, let's say for example the start listener, after I run my after I run my activity to put the toast out, I'll change the label that's out there. So instead of it saying hello world, now it's going to say um, hello, and then maybe I'll just add a new log entry. So I'll just put another log in here. It says. Um, Label got changed. <laughs> Label got changed. Or something like that. So then when I run it now, whoops, I'm running the wrong one. Hold on. Ah, classic example for why I like to close projects. I just clicked and ran the wrong project. So I'm going to close it. I actually wanted to do that though on purpose only to show you that I've got multiple tabs up here. Here's the problem. If you have multiple projects opened up simultaneously with multiple tab tabs, it's hard to tell which one you're actually editing. So it's not a bad idea at one point to close the projects after you open them up and use them. So I'm going to close this guy here, close the project. Now go down to two buttons and run two buttons. Hopefully I made the change to the correct project. It's possible that I made it to the wrong one. <laughs> so now I made it to the right one because the label changed on me. It says, hello there from the start button. Now I should also have a new log item down here. So if I come down here and I filter, this is why you want to filter. There's a lot of stuff in here. Well, there's 22 messages. Wow. Uh, one of these here is going to have it. Here, let's just clear it out momentarily. Run the start button again. And then I put this label got changed in here. So now I see my new log item for the label got changed. So when we're building UI and we're building app interfaces and stuff, we're doing the same stuff over and over again. That's how you work with a button. So what we're going to continue to do is look at different features. We have um, list boxes, tabs, all sorts of different items in the UI that we can work with and then we can program and we can actually put in different things outside of just using activities. It's nice to get a feel for activities, however, before you start in with other items. Yes? 
Uh, the messages themselves? The log messages? Oh, click on up here, it says DDMS. If it doesn't in the view, oh, okay. Great, great. And if you click on it, for example, there's nothing that says test on it. So this another filter, if I press on the plus key, I'm going to name the filter something. So I'm going to put here XYZ or something, or XYA. This is the tag that you've <coughs> labeled in the code. The label that I put in there was two button app. And you have to spell it correctly, same way it's in there before. Now I have one, two, three filters that are all doing the same thing. <laughs> I could probably get rid of a couple of them. But uh, I can see I have different, and this one's for test, this one's for a different one. So what you could possibly do then is just save the tags, and then as you load up different pieces, if I go back to Java here, I think one of them is actually for the life cycle, I'm not sure. Because I have different loaded projects that I can access with different filters that I've set. Is your filter working now? You have to run it in order to see the logs. <laughs> it's logging the real-time event, yes? And The logging as it's occurring or how to set the log? Okay, how to set the log. Okay, so how to set the log. In here, I'm going to, up here, I'm creating the tag with a string. And I'm calling it log tag. And this one's going to be called two button app. This is the one I'm going to filter on later on. So remember this name, whatever you call it. So it's the tag that I'm going to put on it. On the log itself, Here's the one I just, actually, here's the one I added. It's just a simpler looking thing. Log.d is going to create, in fact, if you put the mouse up over here and hover it long enough, you see that d is going to be the sending a debug log message. That's what the d stands for. So log.d, debug log messages, is nothing more than sending it to the log, which is going to be the information that's going to be shown to the screen. There's other different types of logs. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're just sending debug logs, debug messages. So log.d, it takes two parameters, takes the tag, which we called log tag from up here. So it's two button app followed by whatever text we want to put in the log. So this is just quoted text. I put label got here, and I put on click ended, start button started, start button stopped. Because what you're trying to do is figure out where are you in that app. Yep. Yeah, actually, when I run it, you can do this without even setting tags. When I run the app, I'm just going to run it because it's not running. I'm going to run it right now. And I click on the DDMS, and I click on all messages here. I see everything from the emulators. This works with your built-in emulators. It also works with the VirtualBox emulators. So, so if I click through here... I can see, and it's dated too, so this is three, is today 310? Oh, it's 39. How weird. Uh, maybe that was 3 o'clock. Yeah. Anyway, there's a date, there's a time, and then there's a message that's printed in here. I believe I've cleared this several times, um, so it shouldn't, uh, it should be on the time, oh, it's the time that's in there. We've got the application, the two-button application that's running here. We've got the tag. So the column here with the tag is what you're filtering on. You can actually create filters for the other ones. as the application filter. So you can click on this plus here and say by application name. So I'm going to call this two button. It's getting kind of loud in here. Two button app. Uh, two button um, application. And then down here it says by application. Over here I set the I set the filter to filter. Uh, logs that were by the tag, and the tag I created was called two button something. So now down here it says application name. I'm going to set the application name to edu.itu.two buttons. Now I have this column here set on a filter. So you can create as many filters as you want. Filters don't go away, filters stay there. And so you can run, like, an example, a lot of people like try to do like. Um, Oh, I don't know, like generic tags on stuff, so they can figure out when did something die, when did something quit. Like here, we had an interesting error message that occurred, and the tag was actually coming from the Del Delvic, the JVM, and we had a 
to free up memory, do some garbage collecting. So the garbage collection was tagged here, and then the application actually paused for 32 milliseconds. Didn't notice it, it wasn't even in the application. But then the rest of it looks pretty generic, it's all my stuff. So if you look in there and you start seeing broken pipe, um, which is different, this is not the same log as what you get down here on the bottom. When you run it, you're going to get broken pipes and this problem and that problem. This is more of the what occurs down here, which I closed the window here. Uh, let's see, show view, air log. There we go, we got the air log coming up here. This is going to be, I had a failed to load from Eclipse UI. I have, looks like I have an unhandled event loop exceptions. Don't worry about all this stuff. <laughs> If you start seeing it in the DDMS down here, and the log you've logged out, the results you've forked a process or you did something, and you logged it, it's kind of like those you know error messages you see to yourself. Note to self: exception failed, <laughs> or exception was raised. So this is one form of uh, not not really exception handling, but debugging. It's a very popular form to debug. A lot of source code examples will have logs in there for debug and the log.d says give me a debug message here are the debug messages that you're gonna see the very nice thing is it works with my virtual box editor emulator it also works with the uh, also works with the built-in emulators do we need people that need that have problems that need any help we do okay so I'm gonna stop this we'll take a 10 minute kinda of refresh I'll come around and fix problems and we'll start in with our very last tutorial for today. How's that?